an Afghan from Australia, Saad Mosini. He was going to be part of the new Afghanistan, the one that had free speech. He went back to Afghanistan and founded his first television network, the Moby Group, with news shows, quiz shows, information shows. He had 400 employees, including women and including journalists of the Taliban named as military targets. In fact, 12 of his journalists were killed before the fall of Kabul. Saad Mohseni has left Afghanistan, is now in London. He joins me now. Saad Mohseni, I'm so sorry to be talking to you under these circumstances. Can you explain, I, it, why did the Afghan government fall so fast? Why was there so little resistance to the Taliban? Well, I mean, there are two factors. I don't entirely agree with Greg. First and foremost, the Americans built a military in the mold of the U.S. military, uh, heavily reliant on contractors for logistics, for maintenance of aircraft, for planning. Um, and when they left, they took all the contractors with them. So the, the Afghans couldn't maintain their aircraft. They couldn't supply fuel and ammunition to their soldiers around the country. They had no planners helping them. So it, it's, it's almost like tying someone's hand behind their backs even if they have the best weapons, they're not going to be able to fight. That's one, um, which is on the Americans. On the Afghan side, we had an inept, corrupt, and hopeless government uh, for seven years. They politicized the military, completely destroyed it from within. And essentially, people didn't want to die for this particular president and this government. So it was a combination of factors. And most people thought, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to die for this corrupt government. I'm just going to switch sides. And if the Taliban are pretty harsh or really harsh, then we can always come back and pick up weapons and continue the fight. But for now, people had no will. Now, the Taliban says publicly there's going to be no killings of government supporters. It says media outfit like, uh, outfits like yours will be able to continue to operate just as you've been doing. And girls can still go to school. Here is a spokesman. Have a listen to him. The women's rights, whether they are a right to education, their right to work, we don't have a problem with that. We do not have any problem with that. They can have access to education and also can work. But only Islamic hijab, they should observe. Saad Mosseni, do you believe these words? Are you going to go back and, and, and stay in charge of your media empire there? Well, I, you know, they're continuing to broadcast uh, stoically. Um, th these young, courageous uh, reporters are in the office reporting live, interviewing people, including the Taliban uh, spokespeople. As a matter of fact, a group of uh, armed so Taliban soldiers were in the compound a few minutes ago, which I just tweeted, uh, just checking weapons and looking at the licenses and so forth. Whether we can believe them or not, uh, time will tell. I think we need to wait. Listen, it's hard to tell what sort of a policy they will impose because the Taliban have their factions and there'll be a tug of war within the Taliban in terms of how restrictive they'll be. Uh, but for now, the only thing we can do is wait and see. Um, they have been harsh in certain towns, and they've been more gentle and accommodating in other towns. So, you know, it's been mixed over the last few weeks uh, as to how they treat people, opposition figures in the media and so forth. Saad Mohsini, I uh, hope for the best for your journalists, for yourself, of course, and for the future of Afghanistan. Um, good luck. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks, Andrew.